Partner is the economy that a lot of investors are looking to get some leverage out of. But what about India at a time when its leadership is becoming increasingly more encouraging of business and more modern uh, and also of uh, more productive and modern kinds of ways to, to develop and, and grow businesses in the, in the uh, country of India? Maganthan Siva is the Managing Director of India Avenue Investment Management. He joins us in the studio. How are you, Maganthan? Hi, Peter. Good How to see you? you. Likewise. Um, Tell us about the business itself. So the business has origins way back to 2005 right. when I was working for ING Investment Management in Australia yeah. and they were doing a pilot test and discovered that India might be a good market to develop a business. Mm. They asked me to go over there as part of the startup team and set up uh, a, f a business for them. Mm. And as part of living and moving my family over to Mumbai, I uh, got to understand the market conditions very well. Mm. And then when I came back to Australia, I really felt the passion to continue doing something uh, within the Indian markets and bring it to a new market like Australia, mm. build on education, research, content, as well as provide investments. So why did you call it India Avenue Investment Management? I guess the name, it tells the story. I feel in a business, uh, as particularly a start-up business, you really need to keep it simple mm. and uh, in the name tell the story of what you're trying to do. So okay. we went for something simple. Okay, so, so to, to define the, the actual operation, are we talking about a fund that actually goes looking for Indian businesses that have a real lot of potential that most Australians would never have heard of? Yeah, absolutely. So if you look at India over the since the turn of the uh, century, it's been growing GDP at about 7% per annum. Mm. Uh, when you look beneath the hood, uh, you also find a lot of companies that are largely undiscovered that, uh, you know, the brokers cover only the top 150 stocks in India mm. by market. How many companies are there? 6,000, which is the largest in the world. Mm. Uh, 2,000 trade daily. Uh, so there's plenty of stocks to pick from when you look beneath what's been broadly researched mm. and that's <clears> where we feel the real opportunity is because most large funds tend to only look at the top 10 or mm. 20 companies in India. How are the ETFs done in India? Uh, ETFs are a good way to just play the macro story mm. but we believe uh, the best way to invest in India is to be active mm. because it is such a melting pot of entrepreneurs and uh, ideas and companies that are growing from, you know, startup, innovative, entrepreneurs. Um, we feel the best way to do it is through active management. Sovereign risk? Uh, there's always going to be sovereign risk when you invest in uh, perhaps emerging market countries mm. uh, because of a political regime or uh, inclusiveness of their, you know, political strategy. Mm. So in a market like India, we feel it's important to look at it as part of your portfolio mm. rather than as a standalone investment. Mm. Has the arrival of uh, the new Prime Minister Modi, is that a big plus? Does it make you feel more confident about investing in India? Yeah, I think so. Look, I think one of the issues with India has been, whilst it's a large democracy, mm. that's got a lot of positives. It's got 1.3 billion people, sure, lots of young people, mm. but also means it's very hard to execute on things because mm. you've got 29 different states all acting in their own way. So Traffic congestion is an issue too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in Mumbai I used to live eight kilometres from work and used to take me an hour to get to work. So mm. uh, it's 20 million people in a city can yeah. create that. But what the Modi government has really focused on is, uh, you know, cleaning up India. And I mean, uh, not just from a, you know, uh, level of uh, how dirty it is. Yeah, but corruption is corru an issue. Yeah, corruption, uh, uh, creating a pathway for a lot of it's young to you know, look forward to getting employed. There are initiatives like Skill India, Digital India, Make in India, which hopefully will create lots of employment and really allow the middle class effect to take place. Mm. So how many companies are you holding in your fund? Uh, today we have 45 companies. Mm. So whilst there are a lot of listed companies, uh, the advantage of holding an active fund is uh, we want to really own those companies that are growing faster than the market mm. that you're not paying an excessive valuation for. Mm. So a, a lot of the fund managers here actually go to the companies, kick the tyres and get to really understand the management and some of the things that you won't read in newspapers or in you know, brokers' anal uh, analysis. Do you do the same thing when it comes to these Indian companies? Yeah, so we felt the best way to structure a business like this is to have an office in Mumbai mm. 
so we can understand the grassroots perspective of what's going on, meet with management, uh, understand the, you know, the demographics of the country, mm. uh, as well as have an office in Sydney which can really communicate to the investor the virtues of investing in a place like India mm. and dispel some of the perception issues that most Australians have when they're investing in a foreign country. Mm. Have you had support from you know, Indian um, investors who live in Australia? seeing you as an opportunity to, you know, to be your, their eyes and ears on companies that they might like to be invested in? Uh, that's an interesting one. I think for us the initial target market is Australian investors mm. who don't have any prior understanding of India mm. but are finding it difficult to find growth. Mm. Uh, Indian investors have the opportunity to participate themselves. Mm. So if you're a foreign, uh, foreigner in Australia with an Indian passport, mm. you can buy Indian stocks directly. Mm. But an Australian investor cannot. They need to own a licence. Right. So we find generally uh, it's the Australian public that are responding well to the story. How much uh, have you got under management at this point in time? Uh, today the fund is still in its first year, mm. so we have just under $9 million. Mm. Um, so it's a, you know, it's a real... Uh, start-up story from building the story and uh, talking to several groups. How sensitive is the Indian market to what goes on outside? You know, is, it, is, is it Wall Street reactive or can it be completely contrarian? I think any market responds uh, in a negative environment to whatever Wall Street does. So there's elements of high correlation when things are looking bad. Mm. But India's correlation, for example, to Australia is only about 0.3 which is quite low. Mm. And the reason behind that is, uh, if you think about it, it's an economy that has an inverse uh, impact to Australia. Commodity prices rise. India um, is an impacted because oil prices are one of the biggest import. Mm. So actually, it's a good diversifier to economies that have a lot of commodity influence. Mm. Uh, so Norway, Canada, they've all been large investors in India over a substantial period of time. Mm. Australia's a bit of a laggard. Mm. Have you looked at the company called Adani? Uh, yes, of course, that's the one company that most Australians know yes. best. And, you know, they're looking to own and operate the uh, Carmichael project, which mm. is, uh, you know, a $22 billion project and can create and add up to 1% to Australian GDP, mm. uh, you know, particularly the Queensland econ economy. Mm. But Do you like the company? Oh, look, uh, you know, there are some uh, issues with the background and the past of the company, uh, and I think there really needs to come to a strong resolution between the Australian government and... You've been America. very political. Well, well done, <laughs> uh, Good to see you, mate. <laughs> Likewise. That's uh, 